Hello, I'm Northeast Air Communications Specialist Vander Gack. In this video, we're going to be talking about the budget justification and narrative required as part of an application to Northeast Air's Farmer, Partnership, or Graduate Student Research Grant programs. Links to the template, our programs, and mailing list are in the description. The Farmer and Partnership Grant programs award up to $30,000 per two to three year project, and the Graduate Student Research Grant program awards up to $15,000. Completing a budget justification and narrative shows grant reviewers how funding is spent, as well as how that spending is going to contribute to the success of your project and the success of sustainable agriculture in the Northeast. Here are five best practices to keep in mind while you are completing your budget justification and narrative. Let the spreadsheet do the work. Northeast Sayre's budget justification and narrative template has expenses separated by type and built-in formulas to calculate totals. This document has been designed to help you think about all the different types of expenses that your proposed grant project will require. The narrative justification of expense column is your opportunity to show reviewers how each expense is going to contribute to the success of your project. Be specific. Reviewers want to know that you have fully considered the expenses you will encounter over the course of your project. Think about all the specific people, places, and things that will be necessary to make your project a success. How much time will each of those people need to spend? What items will they use, and how many? And where is that work going to take place? While a grant can be used to purchase or fabricate a piece of equipment that would not be used during the regular course of business, Northeast Air funds cannot be used to make capital purchases of land or generic farming equipment. However, they can be used to rent those resources if they are necessary for your project. Some grantees have even worked with equipment companies on lease-to-own arrangements, using rental fees to reduce the cost of purchasing equipment after the project has concluded. At this time, we can't offer any support in setting up that kind of arrangement, but it was a clever solution created by a grantee, and we love to share those. Work together. Invite the people you are planning on working with to help you complete your budget. In addition to ensuring that all of the expenses are considered and presented to reviewers, working together on the budget can help build collaborative momentum ahead of starting a project. Recognize your and your team's value. Northeast Sayre is committed to promoting abundance over scarcity. Our reviewers know that grant projects are most sustainable when everyone involved is being appropriately compensated for their time. You should feel empowered to budget a comfortable amount of time for you and your staff to complete your work and to offer wages that are in line with how important sustainable agriculture is to the long-term health of our communities. For example, Northeast Air reviewers are currently compensated at a rate of $50 an hour. And finally, contact us. Northeast Air grant administrators are here to support you throughout your project. They are happy to answer any questions you might have about completing your budget justification and narrative, and frequently work with grantees during projects to make any reallocations for unexpected or changing expenses. In addition to reaching out to us directly, you can sign up for our mailing list at northeastair.org slash mailing list to stay up to date on these and other programs. And of course, you can like and subscribe to this channel. Let's take a look at a sample budget justification, line by line. First is applicant's name and institution. This is your name and the organization that will receive grant funding if your project is approved. Now let's explore personnel expenses. In the salaries and wages section, you track project specific work that will be completed by members of your organization. In this example, the project leader, Lisa, is a full-time employee with an annual salary of $75,580. Lisa has listed the activities that she will manage and estimates that 5% of her time will be dedicated to this project, expressed as 0.05 FTE, full-time equivalent. Lisa's organization has a research assistant who will also support the project. You can see that Lisa has estimated this in hours a week at a rate of $18 an hour. Lisa's organization has a policy for fringe benefits, so she has included those costs expressed as a percentage. Let's examine non-personnel expenses. Lisa knows that their experiment will require planting 40 plots where treatment will be tested. Seed is measured in pounds, and Lisa has multiplied the number of pounds per plot by the total number of plots for a quantity of 120. You can see that each cost unit in this example is different according to how the materials and supplies are purchased. 
No matter how you measure, you want to show reviewers that you have considered all of the supplies you will need and how they are specific to the work you'll be doing in your project. Project materials that would be used during the normal course of business are intended to be covered under indirect costs. Under the travel section, Lisa has included the traveling that will happen as part of conducting the project, as well as the mileage and lodging costs to present results as part of outreach efforts. This project is intended to include a guidebook, so Lisa has listed how many they will print and the printing cost of each guidebook. This is different from photocopying costs, which you can find listed under the other direct costs. In between, you can see where Lisa has included the cost of postage for field day outreach. Note that communications costs cannot include cell phone charges. The second page of the budget justification and narrative sample begins with consultant, speakers, and other services. You can see that Lisa has a specific individual and an LLC listed, but has included an insect specialist, TBD, to be determined. Even though Lisa has not yet selected a specialist, they've provided an estimate of the hourly rate and hours needed. NEFA requires consultants to be named, so the project leader will need to provide the grant coordinator with a name, resume, and scope of work before this individual can be contacted or paid by your organization. Lisa's project does not include hosting a conference, so this and the following section have been left blank. Lisa is not renting an office or purchasing equipment, but the project will require some land to host the experimental plots, so they've included the rental cost for those here. SARE grants cannot be used to purchase land or general equipment, but they can be used to rent those resources. Grant funds can be used to purchase or fabricate a piece of equipment that's specific to the project. If the equipment will be used for profit after the project concludes, our grant funds typically cover about 40%, since a grant is about two years, and we consider most equipment to have a five-year reasonable lifespan. Finally, you can see that Lisa's organization has a federally negotiated indirect rate, so Lisa's checked the appropriate box there. We hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us directly at northeastair at uvm.edu. Thanks, and have a wonderful day.